Soon, lightning arrived at the airfield with James as fireman. The inspector told the fireman to go with lightning to the countryside onto Edward's branch. The gentleman accidentally switched the points onto the line. We need a heavy car to slow him down. Sally, can you help us? I wish I could, she said. But, but I'm scared of flying over the railway tracks. I'm just scared I might fall in front of a train and get crushed. I'd never be seen again, she said sadly. Don't worry, Sally. I'm a very careful helicopter. You'll be safe with me. Yes, said the inspector. You can trust him. Go on, Sally, said Doc. You can do it. Sally thought for a moment. James needs my help, she said. All right, then. I'll do it. Soon, Sally must check the Doc to Harold, and they took off into the sky. And lightning drove and expected to the countryside. At the station, Edward was taking some children to the seaside. The children were on board, but Edward couldn't go yet. Tom wondered what the matter was. Everyone's ready to go, Edward. Why aren't you moving? he asked. I've got to make for a signal to go green, Tom. I can't leave until the trap's cleared. Honestly, you should know that by now. At last the signal turned green. The signal's down! At last! whistled Edward. After the guard blew his whistle, Edward set off to the seaside. Meanwhile, James was laughing. What a lark! What a lark! He chuckled to himself. Suddenly, he was going faster and faster. He realised that he had no driver. Oh no! What shall I do? I can't stop! Help! Help! Edward wasn't going fast as he puffed along with his train, unaware of what was about to happen. As he came round the bend, he saw James, who was switched on to his train right in front of him. And Edward came around. He was getting closer and closer to James. Get ready, Sally, called Harold. Okay, Harold, called Sally. Harold lowered Sally carefully onto James's flatbed. And it helped James to slow down. Further down the line, Lightning and James's fireman got ready to jump. And triumphantly, James's fireman got into his cab and gained control. He was lucky he was slow enough. Because the next signal had turned red. James's fireman applied James's brakes and they screeched to a halt. But Edward couldn't stop in time and they crashed straight off the rails. Sorry, puffed Edward. I didn't get time to stop. Are you alright, Sally? Yes, I'm fine. Why wouldn't I be? <laughs> and I did it. I was flying and I wasn't scared at all. She said happily. Is everyone else all right? Yes, said James. L and luckily, nor his fireman, Edward's crew, or the children were seriously hurt. There was worse to come for James. Thomas and Stepney were pulling the goods train to Brangham Docks. You're finally in a poster, chuckled Thomas. Maybe you are good enough after all, <laughs> laughed Stepney. But James didn't feel very good. He felt very silly. James's fireman telephoned for help and sent Emily arrived with a fat controller. James, you are not to blame for the accident, said the fat controller. However, you're bumping and bashing the cause confusion and delay at the yard. And you've said rude things about Edward. Sorry, sir. James's crew and the fat controller went to expect the damage of the engines. A fat controller checked Edward, and then spoke to Edward too. Edward, I'm afraid that crash must have damaged the old cylinder. You can't take the children to the seaside now. The children in the coach were very sad. But we wanted to ride on the post dimension, the children cried. 
James felt worse than ever. Please, sir, said James. If I'm at the back end, and Albert Hilton could still mind on Edward. What a wonderful idea, said the back controller. He told Edward Spiderman to help James to fireman if he needed a driver anyway. After James was back on the rails, he helped Edward and its characters to the seaside. Its pistons pumped and its axles ate and the train was heavy, but James pressed on. And soon, with a long hard journey, James helped Edward to the seaside. Holiday makers were already there. Hooray for Edward! And hooray for James for being so kind! James felt very proud when his axles tingled. Remember this, whistled Edward. You may not be the poster engine, but you're still really useful. Remember that next time. Yes, thank you, Edward, he said. And he thought he was right. Being really useful was better than being a poster mention any day.